Georgia season is on the line this week against Tennessee. If Georgia loses to the Vols this weekend, they will have three losses, which pretty much would eliminate them from college football playoff contention. Both of these teams are exactly similar because Tennessee, Nico Imaviava hasn't really played that good since the first month of the season. And Carson Beck, he's thrown two or more interceptions in three out of his last four games. So you got two teams right now that are heavily dependent on their defenses. Tennessee has the best defense in college football, in my opinion. They're fifth in points per game allowed. They're second in yards per play allowed. They're 12th against the run. They're 14th in pass defense, and they are top 20 in takeaways. And you got a Georgia defense that isn't too far off, but the difference between Tennessee's defense compared to Georgia defensively is that Georgia's secondary has been inconsistent at times this year. Tennessee, though, their secondary has been really good. They got a lot of athletes on the back end, and you couple that with the best pass rush in America led by potential top five, top ten pick James Pierce Jr., you got a complete defense. And whoever is going to win this game is not going to be decided by less than maybe five, four points. I expect this game to be a old defensive slugfest. I wouldn't be surprised if we get one of those 16-13 kind of games because the offenses have been very inefficient for both of these programs. Tennessee, their offense is mainly carried by their running back, Dylan Sampson, who has ran for over 100 yards in every game this year. He's had about three, four games this year when he's ran for over 100 or 30, 130 yards on the ground or more. He also has 20 touchdowns on the season. He's averaging five and a half yards per carry. And he has over a 1,000 yards rushing as well. He's been the best running back in the SEC this year. And if Dylan Sampson can't get going in this game and Georgia's run defense is able to neutralize him, Tennessee is going to be in a lot of trouble. Because what has helped Tennessee take some of that pressure off of Nico is the fact that you have the ability to run the football dominantly with Dylan Sampson. But Georgia's run defense is seventh in the country and rushing yard or 17th in the country and rushing yards per game allowed. If Tennessee is forced to be a one dimensional team and Nico has to throw the football 35, 40 times to win this game, I love Georgia's chances to save their season. But if this is a game when Dylan Sampson gets going and Georgia gets pummeled on the ground, they get bullied, they get pushed around, I don't see how they win this game. Because the thing with Nico is that the difference between him and Carson Beck is he takes care of the football. He may be a little bit gun shy. He may struggle to have consistency with his accuracy, getting those deep plays downfield. What has been uncharacteristic about the Vols offense this year has been their inability to generate a lot of explosive plays in the past game. We saw them have a lot of explosive plays throwing the football early during the season, but when they've gotten into conference play since their game against Oklahoma, they haven't really had a lot of those big one-play touchdowns that you've seen them have earlier. But with Dylan Sampson being so good, you know, you don't really care about your lack of explosiveness in the passing game. But if you get your bread and butter taken away, which is your ground game, you're going to be in trouble because Georgia has a defense where you don't want to get into a game where you got to go old, old school Mike Leach air raid because that's not winning football against Georgia. Think about when Alabama and Ole Miss have beaten Georgia this year. They were able to do it playing complimentary football. They were good running the football, but they also had the ability to throw the football when needed. And what makes Georgia such a strange team to gauge is that they looked like they were down and out when they lost Alabama 
and they barely beat Kentucky by one point on the road. But just when you thought Georgia was down and out, they pull off a massive upset on the road against Texas. And the reason why I call it a massive upset is because going into that game, you had a feeling that that was Texas' game to lose. They had home field advantage. They had the more talented roster. Georgia's offensive line has been really bad this year. Carson Beck has been erratic. You would have thought that Texas would have won that game convincingly, but instead, Georgia goes into Austin, and they just completely take over that game, especially in the second half, in spite of Carson Beck's interceptions. That showed you how good of a team Georgia is. Even if they're not playing their best football, they can still find a way to sneak away with a win. But when they played Ole Miss, however, a game that you were really confident that Georgia was going to be able to win due to Lane Kiffin being unable to beat Georgia in past years and how one-sided that game was last year when they both played, you had a 5 out of 5 confidence level the dogs win that game, but instead... You got completely bullied. Old Miss was tossing you around like a cold salad. Are we going to see another game where Georgia rises to the occasion like they did against Texas? Or are they just going to be a complete no-show like we saw last week against Old Miss? You would think that this is a bounce-back spot for Georgia because I can't recall the last time Kirby Smart has lost back-to-back games. And this is normally a team that When they're in situations like this, when they feel like their back is against the wall, they play their best football. But Tennessee, though, outside of that loss to Arkansas, they've been pretty consistent. And what makes me skeptical about Georgia is that we only have about two, three weeks left of the regular season, and we still don't know what Georgia's identity is. We know what Tennessee's identity is. They got a great defense. They don't need to score 30, 40 every game to win. All they need is for their offense to be good enough with their ground game that it allows them to lean on their defense to win games. It's going to be a dogfight for Georgia to get the 20 points in this game. Same thing can be said about Tennessee. But at least Tennessee has had the run game that they can lean on. Georgia... They don't have anything they can lean on. The run game hasn't been there. The passing game has been hit or miss due to the inconsistency with Carson Beck, his turnover issues, the pass protection not being good, and your wide receiver position not being good neither. You got 28 drops on the season. You're like top five in the FBS in drops. You got concerns about your offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo. You got more questions than answers about Georgia coming into this game, which is really scary because you should know what you are as a football team. But this is going to be the game that shows us everything we need to know about Georgia. If you win, then you could be one of those teams that maybe you get into the playoffs And out of nowhere, surprisingly, you do what Alabama did and you get into the Final Four. You see, Alabama looked a lot like Georgia last year. They didn't really have anything to hang their hat on. You didn't know what their identity was, but you did know that this was just a team that just knew how to find ways to win. And that's the kind of team Georgia is. They don't really have anything that You can say, oh, yeah, this is what we do good. This is what our identity is. They just find ways to win games based on the situation no matter what. So me personally, I like Tennessee to win this game. And I'm shocked that I'm saying this because Tennessee is playing on the road in Athens. And we know how tough it is to win in Georgia's home territory. But the reason why I like Tennessee is, is because, one, Nico takes care of the football. Carson Beck cannot afford to have any turnovers in this game. And I know that you can say that's cliche because you never can afford turnovers in any other games. But in a game like this, when you got a defense that's so good, this is the best defense that Georgia has played this year, all your drives have to count. You could have afforded a few mistakes here and there against Texas and even Ole Miss because you knew that your defense was going to be able to bail you out and occasionally your offense 
You have to hope that maybe they could get a big play or two. But in a game like this, big plays are going to be limited for Georgia. And the biggest weakness with Georgia's offense is their inability to block anybody up front. Rather it be in pass pro or run blocking, Georgia's offensive line has been uncharacteristically bad. And you're going up against arguably the best defensive line in college football. And what makes this a concerning matchup for Georgia offensively is that last week you struggled against a defensive line in Ole Miss that is not too far off from how good Tennessee's offensive line is. And if you can't win up front, you can't win that line of scrimmage battle, then you already kind of lost. Georgia fans keep criticizing Mike Bobo's play calling, but you can only do so much when your quarterback has no time to throw. Unless Georgia's offensive line shows up in this game and they play at the level that we've been accustomed to seeing these Georgia offensive lines play these last couple of years under Kirby Smart, I don't see how they score more than 13 points in this game. As bad as how Nico has been and the best game Tennessee has played this year against better competition, at least he's been able to take care of the football, which means that you're not gifting Georgia any extra possessions. But Carson Beck, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when he's going to have a turnover. They got a turnover counter now for Carson Beck. He had several turnovers in their game against Texas, and they were able to win in spite of it. But when he had all those turnovers against Alabama, he dug the Bulldogs into a hole that they were unable to climb out of. And it's just really hard to see Georgia winning this game when you got a Tennessee defense that's not even allowing you to score more than 17 points per game. I could see Tennessee getting the 20. I'm having a hard time picturing Georgia getting the 20 just because what is their identity on offense? We go back to the identity crisis that Georgia currently is in right now. Tennessee doesn't need to throw the football for 400 yards, have five touchdowns out of Nico to win, although you would like that. But you know that you can run the football. Georgia can't really do anything. Your ground game hasn't gotten going. Trevor Etienne has been banged up the most of the season. And your passing game has struggled. Last week against Ole Miss, you only had two plays that went for more than 20-plus yards. So when your offensive line is as bad as what Georgia has been, you're going to have problems moving the ball and sustaining efficiency offensively. Tennessee's offensive line hasn't been any better, though. But the difference is... Georgia's defensive line is not as good as what Tennessee's defensive line is. As a matter of fact, this is probably the worst Georgia has been up front on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football in the last four years. So I like Tennessee to win this game, even though it's hard to bet against Kirby Smart when Georgia is up against the wall. I just feel with how good Tennessee's defense is and with them being able to run the football so effectively with Dylan Sampson, I like them to get the win. 17 to 16 is probably my score prediction that I'm going to go with in this game. This is going to be a game where we see a lot of punting. Scores are going to be at a premium. But with Nico taking care of the football, Dylan Sampson, I'm not expecting him to have a 130-yard game, but I do believe that he's good for at least a few big runs and maybe one or two touchdowns that gets Tennessee over the top in this game. And maybe this comes down to a last second field goal to win it. I trust Tennessee more than I trust Georgia just because their team is a little bit more complete than what Georgia is. And their defense is the main reason for it.